The government's rejected calls for the famous bearskin hats worn by the Queen's Guards to be replaced with faux fur. Animal rights group Peter launched the petition. They've gained support now from over 53,000 people. The government says the alternatives they tested uh, don't work. They're not practical. They're not comfortable. Uh, Well, let's talk to Peter's media and communications manager, Jennifer White. Good to see you this morning. Look, I'm all for tradition. I like tradition. I love all all that stuff that goes on surrounding the Queen and the royal family. I was very surprised when I read last week that that the bearskin hats are actually still bearskin. Yeah, no, absolutely. And as you can see, the faux bearskin cap, it looks identical to the iconic caps that are still being worn by the Queen's Guard. But of course, the difference with our one is that no bears had to be slaughtered for it. And so many people like yourself, they are unaware that in Canada, these black bears are mercilessly gunned down by hunters, all for what is just a ceremonial cap. So for over two decades now, Peter has been urging the MOD to swap to a faux alternative. And now we finally have, you know, the perfect one. Um, so there's just absolutely no more excuses as to why that they, you know, they've not brought this in. Can I, let me... Oh, please, can we yes. Have a, now, the, just, just a slightly push back on that point, because yeah. the, the MOD have said bears are never hunted to order for use by the MOD. Bear pelts that are used are byproducts of licence calls by the Canadian authorities to manage the wild bear population. Yeah, and this is a line that they are continuing to give out. Uh, But from Peter's research, we can see that there have been no government-sanctioned culls. The people who are going out killing these bears are hunters who have been granted tags. They're allowed to use bow and arrows to go and kill these bears. Um, And then what they do, uh, you know, so these bears are essentially being killed for fun. It's sport. And then their fur becomes a trophy, if you will. And then they're sold at auction houses, which are then bought by the cap makers for the Queen's Guard. Now, do we know how many uh, are being because uniforms are um, not, you you know, people don't get their own uniform every time, do they? So they're not, not, they can't be making hundreds of these every year. Everything sort of gets recycled and... Yeah, well, we know that in the past seven years, MOD has spent over a million pounds of British taxpayer money on these caps. Whereas PETA and the faux furrier Ecopel, who've developed this cap, are offering the MOD this faux fur for free until 2030. So free. given the, the current cost of living crisis, you would think a great way to cut some taxpayer spending would be to use this faux fur. So what's their issue? So I'm just looking at their statement now, and they say there are currently no artificial alternatives that meet the essential requirements for these ceremonial caps. Sure you're interested now to find out what those requirements are to make this best fitted. Well, exactly. That's the thing. And we have had this cap tested, the faux fur, in an accredited MOD laboratory. Um, and the fur is the exact same length as real bear fur, and it's also 100% waterproof. But what the MOD have done is they've changed the, the goalposts, and they haven't communicated to Peter exactly what these requirements need to be. They've not even seen so much as a fur sample uh, of this faux fur. Um, so it's incredibly frustrating, and that's why we have launched the petition. We're encouraging everyone to sign to help us get to the 100,000 mark which would then trigger a parliamentary de- uh, p- debate. <laughs> I'm just trying to... These are, they, they always look very uncomfortable when you well, see them on there. this one's also lighter Not particularly well. glasses friendly. Oh, it's not glasses <laughs> oh, oh, look, no. it's room, oh, room respect. <laughs> it's, um... There you go. How heavy is it, Stephen? It, it, well, it's not too heavy, but I can imagine... I think also you, you've got a bit of a chin strap issue there. I've got... Um, well, I, yes, I can. <laughs> I mean, you're modelling it very well, though. Thank and you, I'm trying my best. It should be a lot lighter best. than the than the actual one, so it would actually be so much more comfortable for the guards as well to have this faux alternative. And, of course, you know, it's a modern cap. It's fit for 21st century Britain. Even the Queen herself doesn't wear fur anymore, um, and 95% of the British public doesn't wear fur. No. So, you know... It, it seems extraordinary. It seems extraordinary. If you, if you are in the Queen's Guard, I do apologise, because I do believe that we shouldn't... These uniforms are worn with distinction. I'm ruining this one, so I do, <laughs> I do apologise. Um, I think you make a very valid point in today's day and age. But really yeah. good to see you this morning. Thank you. I'm going to... Good to see you, Stephen, as well. Model yes. and for, presented this for, morning. For those of you uh, on the radio, I have got this thing on. So it's worth downloading the app to have a look. Um, and it's so tall that it's actually out, out of shot. It so. is out of shot. Yes. But if they're lighter, one of the big issues is the, is the weight of these things for the Queen's Guard. And you see people fainting and all that. When so these actually, would, do you think it'd be a sensible idea? I can't see why they just wouldn't do it. 
We, well, they've said they don't meet the requirements, so obviously that is now up for debate. Change the requirements. And Madge maybe could do it. Jennifer, thank you very much for coming thank in. You. Great to thank have you. you. Well, let us know what you think, particularly, of course, our email gpviews at gbnews.uk.